Hello, okay. everybody. So, uh, let's start. Uh, I'm Marcin, I'm a senior software engineer working at Huawei. And today we're supposed to present together with Joe, however, he couldn't come to Paris, so I'm going to do it alone. Um, today on the presentation, I would like to bring uh, some problem that exists in the container ecosystem and world that we don't fully describe compatibility of the images. So I would like to bring more attention to the problem itself and gather your honest feedback. In October 2023, we established a new working group under OCI. Uh, we tried to define image compatibility, basically what it means for users, how this could be used and so on. And we want to initially support Linux, Illumos, Windows, and in the future, FreeBSD. I know people there were interested in that, so, uh, but they don't have capacity right now to work on that. And basically the final list of supported fields uh, is to be determined by the working group. So we don't know yet uh, what exactly you want to support there. I mean, there are ongoing discussions with so many different opinions, uh, but we will get there. And finally, we try to figure out appropriate solution for that. Uh, one more note from my side that all the opinions contained in these presentations are my own. Uh, this is not an official statement from the working group itself. Uh, so yeah, Basically, the presentation has been made uh, based on the discussions on the working group and my observations in there. So let's talk quickly about containers compatibility and portability. Um, today, containers are often thought to be completely portable across time and space, and a lot of time they do work. That's true until they don't. And containers are just regular Linux processes with many of the same advantages and disadvantages when it comes to portability and compatibility. Those two sentences are very accurate about containers because for most of the users, they work fine. I mean, 90% of users, it's okay. And people expect that uh, there is this mindset in the community that if I run container, it will work out without a problem. Uh, however, in Telco, we discovered that, I mean, it's quite obvious because we require some specific uh, things regarding hardware and uh, OS configuration and so on. So it cannot always work like uh, out of blue right it's it has to be it has to be configured not especially for some uh, heavy workload like i don't know some cnc cnf like routers and so on and once we started this working group uh, we I, I, I learned that people think about compatibilities over like for different organizations it means something different so I find this definition of uh, compatibility from Cambridge Business English Dictionary very accurate because it's about computer programs to work successfully with other machines or programs. And work successfully is a keyword in here because it means something else for different organizations and interest groups. Because initially when we started this working group uh, to determine image compatibility, I thought about that like uh, something like binary um, approach, it's zero or one. It can work or not. The container can fail or be successful on the, on the node. But I was a little bit wrong because people came up with different approaches in there and I came up with compatibility context. I will present here uh, three different bullet points. So the first one is host compatibility, the container's hard requirements. This is what I said a few seconds ago, that it's about if container can work on the host or cannot. An example of that can be if a container can, uh, if container requires specific hardware like CPU, uh, NIC, GPU because of CPU features, NIC because of performance or features as well, and GPU for some computation. And additionally, we have OS side where you have kernel features, modules, uh, generally speaking, the whole kernel configuration and different aspects of OS as well. An example of that could be our virtual machines that runs in a container. So let's imagine we have a container X and inside you want to run KVM virtual machine. So if KVM is available on node A, but is not available on node B and C, uh, then you have a problem and your container will not run in there. So this is hard requirement. Uh, another example can be NVIDIA uh, CUDA toolkit versus NVIDIA kernel driver available on the host. I don't want to go too deep into how NVIDIA is uh, 
doing backward and forward compatibility is not, not, not the point in here. It's just if you require some specific features uh, in CUDA 12.1, then you have to have appropriate NVIDIA driver uh, pre presented on the node, right? So the first category is containers hard requirement. And then we have performance metrics. Basically, uh, it's about if, if container can run on the host, but if it doesn't mean meet performance criteria, uh, it can be considered incompatible. So this is very valid for real-time or near real-time applications like some telco services that have uh, very high SLA requirements. An example of that from uh, Huawei Cloud could be that we have some very critical telco service uh, with high SLA requirements of throughput and latency period. So we have container X and in theory it could work with all of the nodes. However, benchmarks show that uh, container X doesn't perform very, very well with Nix C and then we consider basically the container incompatible. So we so we consider here as well performance metrics to be to be you know some kind of point if container is compatible uh, with the host or not. And the last one is the most optimal image. So this is kind of, I, I was surprised by this approach a little bit, but uh, it's about selecting the most appropriate nodes for the image that results in maximally optimized workload on the cluster. If it's not possible, then, base, then fall back to nodes that still can run uh, the container. And it's also kind of sort of compatibility, right, in that case. An example of that could be application that if uh, CPU supports advanced uh, vector extensions, you want to get this container schedule on the, on the node with AVX supported. Uh, so, but if it's not, and still container can work without AVX, you want to fall back to node B and C. Uh, so this is the third uh, compatibility uh, context. So how we do it this today? Like, uh, today we have expectations that users or sysadmins provide um, appropriate infrastructure for containers. Uh, however, we could somehow inform them about the workload that is running in there. So the, the way how we could do that, we could bring some additional metadata for compatibility from the container side. So it's not only about, you know, sysadmin trying to figure out how configure the cluster and so on. It's especially valid, for example, uh, if you are running, uh, if you are running some cluster and you are pulling their uh, vendor software and at some point you are responsible for that and you are responsible for debugging and maintaining, so you want to get, grab some information about uh, compatibility of the container itself that will help you to debug that. Another thing is group applications, that you could group specific type of applications into one workload type and that would allow you to optimize your cluster itself. And also like, configuring the cluster, like you would have better information about that. You could also validate uh, new hardware and OS before running containers in there, so you have an additional check. And the last one, very important, is fail fast. Basically, you don't want to pull like images and then learn that, for example, you know uh, something doesn't work there, and uh, you want to reschedule your container on the or reconfigure the the node. So it gives you an, one quick check if container is in theory compatible with the node or not. So how people are doing this today? Uh, people or vendors provide documentation how to run your containers but it's done in so many different ways that it's impossible to automate the checks. And the other thing is people try to launch containers on the cluster and then in case of failure they read logs and see what's all going on in there and if they, for example, should reconfigure the cluster, uh, sorry, the, the node or, uh, or go somewhere else. I, I see this, the second one, uh, very often. Just people try to launch and see what's going on in there. If there is missing kernel configuration, some features, some modules, maybe missing hardware and so on. Uh, but with hardware is a little bit different story in Kubernetes because you have ways to expose that and you can express that a little bit differently. Uh, however, it's still valid, I think. And the third thing is annotations. Uh, People provide information on the container site already, but it's not standardized. And I learned that also in the compatibility working group. Uh, an example of that is HPC community. 
they bring their own hardware annotations and so you can see here uh, CPU version, ISA level, what kind of uh, CPU model is there and with available features. Also you can see that driver versions in here uh, of, of NVIDIA driver versions and also CUDA versions and so on. Uh, additionally you have libc implementations, glibc version, kernel version, st stuff like that. So it basically shows that uh, we have specialized organization that require this information. Maybe it's not going to be 90% of users that are using that. Uh, however, the requirement is there. And those organizations are not small. Telco and HPC are quite big and other could benefit uh, from that too. So how this looks like today? Because Open Container Initiative uh, governs a few specs today. We have image spec, container runtime spec and distribution spec. But we miss something for compatibility. I mean, image spec itself allows you to describe to some point uh, some specific features, like Windows is using OS features field to, uh, for, for their builds. And, and also platform, uh, platform object allows you to describe a little bit of uh, compatibility, but uh, in my opinion, it's not enough. And that's why the working group has been established to change this a little bit. Because once we have this, because of portability is, uh, you know, you have a container runtime spec, image spec and stuff like that. So other implementations can have some kind of guide how to do stuff. Uh, but if we provide something for compatibility, if it, if, even if it's a new spec or, uh, or something improved in the image spec, then we will make better supportability. So that's the goal basically for that. And so, as I said, that's why the OCI image compatibility working group has been started. Uh, we were able to get some good amount of stakeholders in there. So it's Huawei, NVIDIA, Illumos, which is another operating system, OKD, Intel, SUSI, HPC, and Docker. Also, uh, we have, like, I would say, a lot of contributors in there so far. And yeah, it's, we are trying to figure out what kind of uh, solution we should provide to the community. As a group, we came up with high level, uh, three high-level uh, use cases. Uh, basically, more granular image selection. Uh, today, image selection is very simple. I mean, it's, it's totally fine. It's great that it works that way because it works for most of the users and it's simple, right? <laughs> so. Uh, today it works in the way that the first matching image is returned and you can pull it. Uh, but sometimes you need something uh, more complex, so we're trying to figure out how to do more granular image selection. And then we want to improve container scheduling as well, because once you provide this container metadata, uh, you, can, you can be like better in scheduling. And the cluster provisioning, I already mentioned all the reconfiguration stuff that uh, that would be helpful uh, for sysadmins. I mean, the information you provide to them, like if we have some additional stuff on the container side, some kind of metadata, it will be much easier for everybody to support their specialized cases. And as a group, we are, we are able to come up with four proposals. Uh, three proposals are already merged and one is under review. Uh, so let's go quickly through them. And proposal A is all about uh, to allow to add custom annotations on the image index and runtime sites. Uh, so today on the, uh, in the image spec, you are allowed to uh, annotate your containers as HPC is doing. However, uh, we are missing some uh, stuff on the uh, runtime side. So for, imagine this kind of case. Uh, you have a container A that requires, requires some uh, GPU. So you annotate that with example.com, GPU, NVIDIA. And on the, container side, on the container runtime side, you could provide a similar annotation, like if you run container D, you could bring uh, annotation the same as on the image example.com, GPU, NVIDIA, and then you could improve the image selection uh, that way. It's a very simple solution because it doesn't require uh, a lot of like changes on the container D or different container runtimes. Uh, so it's kind of yeah nice. However, in my opinion, it's too customizable because we try to come up with some kind of standard in here. And then we have a proposal E that suggests to use reserved platform features field, which has been reserved for a very long time. And we would 
have to come up with standard list of supported features in there. Uh, it covers some of some aspects of compatibility, uh, but not all of them. Uh, so, yeah, we are still discussing solutions in there. And then we have a proposal B that is a little bit different approach than others, uh, because it introduces a new artifact type for compatibility. So you don't keep compatibility metadata in the uh, image uh, itself. You basically introduce a new artifact type, keep the spec there, and you have relation one-to-one -one between artifact and the image. And also, uh, it allows to define graphs on the spec, uh, basically for for compatibility relations. So imagine a situation uh, like that. You have, uh, because you have, if you want to enable some kernel features or something like that, it can be done uh, in different ways for based on the hardware. So uh, you, if you have AMD CPU and uh, or Intel CPU, you have different ways of it of enabling IOMMU, for instance. So that's why there was uh, proposals to let people to define uh, graphs on the spec level. Uh, however, the community doesn't like that too much because of complexity. If you try to represent graph in JSON, it's kind of uh, bad looking, right, and hard to understand sometimes, especially if graph, graph is growing. So this is understandable, but still it's in the proposal B. And the last thing, uh, because we were thinking uh, how to enable all compatibility across different organizations and so on. And there was suggestion that maybe instead of trying to define uh, everything ourselves, we allow people to define their own compatibility fields uh, based on their requirements. And this approach is about to having one repository that different organizations could contribute to. Uh, so, for example, if I have organization Telco, I could contribute to this repository, adding my own organization itself there, adding my own attributes that I'm interested in, like if SRIOV is enabled on the host, and implement some kind of plugins that would check that. And everything is in centralized repository because of security and control uh, flow. Uh, sometimes it might be required that uh, the checks requires uh, root permissions or so. So the idea here is that people, once they bring their own plugins, they also come up with their own app armor or C Linux profiles that we control what's going on in there. Uh, that's proposal B. Uh, proposal D is a little bit different, uh, still introduces a new artifact type for compatibility, similar approach, but allows to define graph on the schema level for organizations. So instead of users that come up with their own relations based on the compatibility attributes, we have, uh, we have organizations that do that for, for them. Uh, it's a different approach because as an organization I can come up with uh, attributes relation. So, for example, I would allow if if I have HPC use case, I could allow, uh, I could maybe not allow, but guide people how to uh, how to use specific attributes, like when it comes to storage performance and so on. And the final thing allows users to add their content in a very flexible and open way. It's a very different approach from uh, B, because we don't have one centralized repository. Uh, where people can contribute, they can come up with their own stuff, their own solutions. Uh, so maybe as OCI image compatibility working group, we come up with a library that could be implemented by others and uh, allow people to do the, to do stuff themselves. Uh, much more open and it brings some risk in my opinion, but it's a very interesting idea. Also, Proposal B brings some risk as well, because you, if you want to keep centralized everything, it's not so uh, good as well. But there is a trade. We have uh, like openness versus uh, security and, and stuff like that. So uh, basically, I like both proposals B and D in here as well. And integration with Kubernetes. How we think that could uh, work with Kubernetes today? Uh, we could validate nodes before pulling images. I, I think there is some work uh, uh, that we could do together with NFD folks, at least take some part of NFD project uh, to, uh, to maybe, uh, that could improve our tool or, um, or like basically we could take scanners from NFD that we could use in our own tool to uh, discover stuff and maybe do some matching in there and also improve scheduler by considering considering containers compatibility metadata. Uh, 
this is discussable, all of that, because we are still in a phase where we are trying to figure out what's the best for users and we are trying to get feedback and attention in here. However, you are not so much in here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, maybe uh, afterwards I can get some feedback uh, later. But, uh, yeah, and then there is a first, the last uh, point as a data source for dynamic node reconfiguration, because I saw uh, in Kubernetes world that there are attempts to dynamically, re dynamically reconfigure nodes on the fly. And that could be potential uh, metadata for that too. However, for very specialized cases, because if you have very generic cluster that accepts any uh, like workload, uh, then you, you don't want to have dynamic node reconfiguration there for sure, because if you enable one, uh, if you enable one node for a specific type of application, you can disable for others and so on. So if you have a specific workload type, like for example, routers in uh, CNF routers or something like that, and you have small tweaks on the, on the node, maybe that would be acceptable. But uh, yeah, that's, that's how it looks like so far. And we are looking for feedback, so if you are willing to share your honest opinion with us, then reach, on, reach us on Slack, Google Group, and GitHub. And additionally, we meet every Monday and discuss stuff in there. So generally speaking, we are still in a very early development in there, and we are trying to figure out what's the best for users. Uh, we don't want to change mindset of people that, that exists today, like, uh, if that containers can run anywhere because this is the mindset people have today, like most of them. It's, it doesn't work everywhere, but, uh, but uh, yeah, but I think uh, it's, uh, it's correct mindset. So yeah, basically that's it. I wonder if you have any thoughts about that. Hey, thank you so much for that. I've got a question about, uh, so solution A, I think you proposed uh, uh, introducing some sort of field similar to an annotation. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, the custom annotations are a field similar to annotations. So uh, the, my understanding is that this would be the most flexible solution, right? Yeah. You've got annotations on nodes and on your containers or your, 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 your pods, whatever it is, and that matching happens. Uh, what are the downsides to that other than the um, the security? The, the, you talked about that with B&D. There, is there anything else that you'd be concerned about with this one? Yeah, the biggest downside of that is because today HPC came up with their own annotations, how to do the stuff. And if we come up again with different organizations coming with their own annotations to express some kind of uh, compatibility like, I don't know, kernel uh, modules or something like that, then this is the biggest downside. We want to standardize that, that is understandable for everybody. But if every, if every organization has come up with their own custom annotations, then we have a problem again. Uh, so this proposal A, uh, it's about, you know, using all the custom annotations you can bring yourself. It's not about defining a standardized. Maybe we can uh, with this proposal A, somehow mix this pro with proposal E and come up with something there. But yeah, we still are discussing stuff. It's not uh, final. Are there fields or are there um, uh, features that overlap in, such, in, in that way such that there is duplication? Uh, my understanding is that, well, you know, if a particular uh, provider, a particular hardware manufacturer has some feature, mm -hmm. that's unique to them. Do you know of any examples of things, say, across two providers that have different fields, but they're actually the same thing? That's a very good question. I mean, probably yes. I, I, if you think about, uh, like, standard stuff, like if you want to express hardware, I don't know, PCI, class ID, device ID, vendor ID, those are pretty standard stuff. And then operating system configuration, kernel modules configuration, uh, some tweaks in there, those kind of standard stuff. But we don't know if... There are organizations that uh, have something 
very, very specific to their needs. For now, we are discussing that with HPC and telco use cases, and uh, Intel is providing some uh, input there as well. But that, that's, that's the point of bring. Uh, that's the point of allowing people to come up with their own fields and attributes. And proposal B is basically addressing this as a centralized repository. So in that case, you wouldn't have overlap. Uh, in proposal D, you could have an overlap, but you know, it's just more more open and flexible way. Gotcha. That makes sense. Thank you. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for your presentation. Um, so I have I have a couple of thoughts that are not really well organized at this point, but um, the first one is I like the idea of proposal E. I believe it was because it. Um, ties the image along, like if we're using the image as the source of defining these affinities that we want, then having it packaged within the image itself in a structured way makes sense to me. Um, the limitation of that is I don't currently believe, I could be wrong about this, I'm not really an expert in the area, but I don't believe that the Kubernetes scheduler is actually really aware anything about the image itself. So, like, from a scheduling decision-making perspective, there's really not a mechanism to have a Kubernetes entity be able to gate a container or a, a, a pod from being admitted before it makes it down to the node. And then the runtime could say, like, actually, this image isn't really ideal for this node, but it's far too late in the process. Um, this also makes me think about a really, a, a very common conversation that we're having at this KubeCon, and I would urge you to participate in the unconference conversation about um, DRA because that is also describing a separate mechanism of having a user define special resources or like special hardware configuration that they want their workload to run on, but it's coming from the pods. It's being defined from the pod perspective rather than the image, which is a little bit more idiomatic for Kubernetes. Um, so that is all to say, this is interesting. I think there would need to be some pretty significant extensions to the scheduling mechanisms for us to really take advantage of it in a meaningful way. But having the, you know, uh, I would urge you to join in the conversations about DRA because there may be able to be some overlap in the way that we sort of conceive of this. Yeah, so uh, thanks for your input. Uh, I agree with you about this Kubernetes stuff, the scheduler itself, that it's not aware of some compatibility or any other metadata of the images itself. And this is just a rough idea that scheduling could be improved. The way how it's done, it's not determined yet. So we don't know how to do it the best way. Maybe it doesn't make sense to even uh, extend the scheduler itself or bring any piece of software that would allow you to I don't know, consider metadata of compatibility in uh, different ways. Uh, so everything is basically baking in there and we are trying to understand what are the best use cases and scenarios for the users. So yeah, basically um, it's in progress. <laughs> totally, no, no, and I, I can appreciate the use case of having this sort of information baked into the image. I think like, just for Kubernetes alone to take advantage, like, you know, this is a conversation that's happening in the OCI, which is, a you know, by it being at the layer of the container runtime, it's, you know, we're not really going to, it's, the conversations don't always overlap between, you know, the orchestration layer and the runtime layer, but, um, yeah, there would need to be pretty significant overhaul, like the scheduler would need to be taught how to speak to a registry basically to be able to do this, which, you know, then comes into runtime specific sort of configuration on which registries are actually being talked to. Like, you know, both ContainerD and Cryo have mechanisms to uh, define uh, mirror registries, which means that it's actually lying to the kubelet saying, oh, sure, I'm pulling this image from here and it's actually pulling it from somewhere totally different, um, which is kind of hacky and, you know, but th that said, like, that adds an, another layer of complexity because like the runtime is not even always being honest to the whole Kubernetes ecosystem about where it's actually getting the image. Um, and theoretically that it, the SHA should be exactly the same. So it should be the same image. But if we're like going this artifact route and it's like being stored in a separate place like that may be a missed link there. Um, so yeah, 
those are some of my thoughts. Um, I'm interested. I, I might pop into the OCI meetings to voice the thoughts there and the connections to Kubernetes, but um, just wanted to let you know about those. Sure, sure. Thank you for your input. If you'd like to join every Monday, 10 a.m. PST, uh, every input is welcome, and thanks for your thoughts. Cool. Thank you.